Assal Rod says, the fact that Israel banned Al Jazeera hours before beginning its assault on Rafah is not a coincidence. After everything we've seen in the last seven months, imagine what they'll do when they think no one is watching. And that's the reason for the, the necessity for having a free press because you always need somebody that is watching. The problem is, is that they do not want people to report on what's actually going on in the ground. This is why Assal Rod said what she said. And yes, they did it right before they did their attack on Rafa. And as of right now, they are, there's a massacre happening in Rafa that started Sunday. I think it was Sunday, Sunday night, early Sunday morning. And so more innocent Palestinians are going to die. In democracy, freedom of speech and freedom of the press is an integral part of the democratic process. If you aren't free to speak your mind and or if the press isn't free to share and gather information, then there is essentially no democracy. Israel has shown its true colors, not only in committing genocide in Gaza, but implementing apartheid conditions in the West Bank. But it's now shutting down and banning international news organizations from covering their war crimes. Al Jazeera has been banned from Israel and Gaza. Let's get into the story. And let's share. Well, here it is, folks. Israel bans Al Jazeera. What does it mean and what happens next? Let's get into it. The blurb says Al Jazeera says it will pursue available legal channels to protect its journalists from Israel's slanderous shutdown. Since Israel cabinet unanimously voted to shut down Al Jazeera in the country on Sunday, immediately ordering the closure of its offices and a ban on the company's broadcasts. The decision was announced by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on X, formerly known as Twitter. Hours later, Israel's communications minister Shlomo Kari published footage on X showing Israel, Israeli authorities, specifically inspectors from the Ministry of Communications, backed by the police, raiding the Al Jazeera office in East Jerusalem and confiscating the channel's equipment. This has got to be scary. Because imagine either people like myself, the gray zone, or any other news outlet out there where you cover the news on the ground and the police show up with government officials to take your laptops, your cameras, your streaming equipment, everything, and says that you're no longer allowed to report on the news in this country in this region. Imagine that happening here. Let's continue. So it says, why did Israel shut down Al Jazeera? The shutdown comes a month after Israel's parliament, the Neset, passed a law on April 1st that allowed Israel to temporarily shut down foreign media outlets, including Al Jazeera, if it deems them a threat to security. In a previously reported report, Al Jazeera's Imran Khan, reporting from occupied East Jerusalem, explained the terms of the law further. Based on the law, the Al Jazeera website is banned in Israel, including anything that has the option of entering or accessing the website, even passwords that are needed, whether they are paid or not, and whether it's stored on Israel servers, Israeli servers or outside of Israel. It says additionally, the Al Jazeera television channel is completely banned in Israel. Within the country, cable providers now show a message that the network is prohibited from the air. Though, so though in East Jerusalem, some people have told Al Jazeera that they could still access the channel on television as of Monday afternoon, which was yesterday. Khan added that the internet access provider that hosts Al Jazeera.net is also in danger of being fined if they host the website. Akiva Eldar, the political analyst and contributor to the Israeli newspaper Haaretz, 
told Al Jazeera that the shutdown is, quote, a very popular populistic move to feed the beast of the public opinion that is very disappointed from the conduct of the government in Gaza and in the international arena, end quote. Adding to this also, uh, to please the partners from the radical right, Netanyahu's government relies on support from a band of far-right parties and leaders, many of them like Finance Minister Belezel Smoltrich and Minister of National Security, Itamar Ben-Gavir, holding key positions in the cabinet. So it says, Kari's office said Al Jazeera has shut down for 45 days and the shutdown can be renewed in accordance with the law passed on April 1st. So it's when the law passed, Netanyahu said he would act immediately in accordance with it to stop Al Jazeera's activity. However, the timing of the shutdown months later coincides with the crucial negotiations between Israel and Hamas on the war mediated by Egypt and Qatar, where Al Jazeera has its headquarters. So uh, this really is a hit on, dare I say, democracy? Because this is a journalist website. This is a news outlet. And so it's like, well, what threat to their security are they posing? What, why is it that, why is it that, Al, what type of danger does Al Jazeera put upon Israel? Because all they're doing is reporting on the news. There was a there was a video put out by Double Down News talking to one of the editors for Al Jazeera, and he was speaking about why Al Jazeera, not why, but some of the information that Al Jazeera had put out and as to why they're uh, doing what they're doing because ultimately Al Jazeera is basically saying that the emperor has book closed. And the person who says that, well, they're the one to basically get, get targeted. So let me just share this really quick. I'm not going to share this entire video because it's kind of long. It's uh, over 16 minutes. But let's get into this. At Al Jazeera's investigative unit, we've conducted a forensic, meticulous examination of the events of October the 7th. We uncovered very, very real crimes committed by Hamas and others. But I think what was perhaps most significant were the crimes we discovered that did not happen. And it's hugely concerning that these revelations have been virtually entirely ignored by the Western press. What's extraordinary is the Israelis were aware of the plans. Hamas were actually training. So I can't show that because, you know, eh, unfortunately, that's what got my, uh, my channel demonetized in the first place. So I have to be very careful about that. Sorry, guys. This is the part that I dislike. You would think that if Twitter is owned by, by Elon Musk, it will work a lot more efficiently, but apparently not. Jeez Louise, this guy. And it's hugely concerning that these revelations have been virtually entirely ignored by the Western press. What's extraordinary is the Israelis were aware of the plans. Hamas were actually... So let's continue. For dawn, spotters along the fence are reporting back to headquarters. And the head of Shin Bet and the head of military intelligence take this seriously enough that in the middle of the night, So that's just some of it, but there's more. 
Um, so what they basically explain in this, because I, I gotta be very careful about some of the images on here, is that when it comes to uh, what has happened, like some, uh, they talk about how some people who were murdered on October 7th were not by Palestinian resistance. It was actually by uh, friendly fire from Israel, from their Apache helicopters. Um, the talk about how they basically debunked the story about the sexual assault that was happening uh, on October 7th, basically saying that there was no credible, credible evidence at all that sexual assault actually happened on October 7th. So they also bring that out because Israeli officials have been coming out and making these claims without any evidence at all. And then also the killing of babies and infants, the 40 beheaded babies, babies put in, put in ovens, things like that, that they... There's no evidence whatsoever to support any of those claims as well. So Al Jazeera has actually been putting this out saying there's no evidence, right? Investigative reporting has been showing this. Israel doesn't like this because look, I'm gonna put it to you like this. Just like It, it, it's, it's basically like what Kendrick Lamar <laughs> and Drake. It's basically, if you stop lying about me, I'll stop telling the truth about you. You know, so it's like, yeah, they're 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 telling the truth about Israel, and Israel doesn't like it, and it, 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 so it's like Israel keeps telling the lie, and then Al Jazeera is like, uh, nope, and they keep poking holes in their lies and going, nah, mm -mm, you guys. You guys are wrong on that one, on, on all these different points. And so if you're banning Al Jazeera, it also limits what the uh, people, the Israelis can actually see in regards to what their government is doing. Let me share this as well. Because I think this is also important. Because they don't want you to see what's going on on the ground. Uh, let's go here. Because Yanis Verkov, uh, always butcher his last name. Yanis Verkovakis. I hope I said his name correctly. Actually, gave some thoughts about this as well, and I think this is important to take into context, especially as to why Israel is doing this. Let's go. Israel's war on truth is climaxing. After having murdered around 100 journalists, many of them connected one way or the other to Al Jazeera. First of all, let's stop there. Over 100 journalists, Palestinian journalists on the ground have been killed. So first of all, if you're really dedicated to free speech and freedom of the press, you wouldn't have killed all those journalists on the ground, but they did. Two, if they were really actually dedicated to freedom of the press and free speech on the ground, because it's supposedly a democracy, it's supposed to be a democracy, and yet they shut down a news organization that is critical of their government. You know who else did that? Ukraine did that. Under, under Vladimir Zelensky. He also did that as well. So it's important to take into context as to, you know, if they are taken away the implement of free speech and a freedom of the press, is it a democracy? I think that's an important question that we need to ask ourselves. Let's continue. Yeah. Now, the Israeli regime is banning Israelis, citizens, 
residents, people under occupation, Bedouins, Palestinians, Jews, from watching Al Jazeera on their television screens or online. Why? Because they do not want. The regime does not want. The apartheid state calling itself Israel does not want Israelis to know what's happening in Gaza behind their backs, essentially. They do not want Israelis to have a look, a glimpse of the bodies of children, the starved youth, the starved elderly, the result of intentional starvation. They do not want any, any opportunity that Israelis may have to find out what the other side of the story might be. Lies and uh, the repression of um, a, a, a highly balanced medium like Al Jazeera is instrumental and functional uh, to the interests of a genocidal ethnic cleansing campaign of the kind that Israel is perpetrating in Gaza, but not just in Gaza, in the West Bank and in East Jerusalem as we speak. Meanwhile, the West's defense of Israel's brutality, brutality on the ground, but also brutality when it comes to murdering the truth, delivers the West to barbarism, especially the European Union, which is now banning eyewitnesses to the French Senate, which is banning our Palestine Congress in Berlin, which bans any sensible, rational discussion of how to combine, on the one hand, fighting against the scourge of anti-Semitism and fighting against the ethnic cleansing, apartheid policies, genocidal policies of Israel across the land of ancient Palestine, Israel-Palestine. We need to rise up. So uh, uh, this is really just a, if, if what I said is true, that Israel is really just a tool of the West, which I, because a lot of people have it reversed. They'll say, well, the West is really just a puppet of Israel. No, reverse it. Israel is a puppet of the West. And what they do in Israel is what they actually really want to do here. That's dangerous because ultimately they don't want outlets like Al Jazeera. And yes, of course, Joe Biden came out and said, oh, well, we don't agree with this, blah, blah, blah. But it, it's that's like telling a teenage boy, I don't like you having a girl in your room alone. And yet you turn a blind eye whenever you see him close the door and lock it. You feel what I'm saying here? It's like, oh no, I don't like when you do this and yet you keep allowing it to happen. So when it comes to the only democracy in the Middle East, as they like to call themselves, if you're if you're stamping down dissent and in investigative reporting that goes against your narrative, are you really a democracy? Also, because you have control of Gaza, because let's be real, Israel has control of Gaza. They literally have a caloric diet on the people of Gaza. They monitor you know, they, they, you can't even get chocolate in. You can't get cilantro in Gaza because Israel says, no, you can't. You can't even get a wedding dress. And so if you're not, if you're literally controlling the food, water, fuel, and electricity that can come in and out, you essentially have power over them. And essentially, if they do not have all their rights that are recognized, just like every other Israeli, it's not a democracy. The United States wasn't a democracy when chattel slavery was still implemented because all the people who are citizens were not considered to be human beings. 
So was the United States a democracy back then? No, because only certain people could vote. Right? So is Israel really a democracy? Because they're doing this? I think that's an important question for us to ask. Because what is happening now is a harbinger of a clampdown on freedoms and on rights that uh, we Europeans fought for centuries to grab, to establish, to gain. Let's rise up. So, of course, you know, uh, Giannis for, for, for Giannis. <laughs> is you know very right in that is that we have to fight against this you know this means to quell dissent means to stop the sharing of important information that's coming out against outlets like al jazeera because the problem is is what's going on in al jazeera right now it's just a microcosm of what corporate entities uh, that really control our governments really want to do. Al Jazeera says Al Jazeera's equipment has been seized during a raid on Channel's office in occupied East Jerusalem, says Communications Minister Shlomo Kari. And so it, it's, it's, I think we need to look at if they're going to do it over there, then they're going to try to implement that here because really, you know, what happens in Israel, uh, you know, America follows. Like, look at how they treat us in the United States by means of the police. The police are trained by IDF soldiers. And so, you know, that's one of the reasons why I think it's so important that we monitor what they're doing there. Uh, you know, and news outlets like Al Jazeera, what they're putting out, um, I think it's important too, because, you know, you have, you have many of us that look at them for, you know, of course, every news outlet pretty much has a bias, but Al Jazeera's bias is not completely in line with settler colonial project known as Israel. And so you have people who are even in US government that are also seeing this and also going up against uh, or letting their voices be heard as them being against it. So this says first American diplomat to resign over US support for Israeli genocide in Gaza. Let's take a listen. I made it abundantly clear through daily reports of the ramifications of our messaging, abundantly clear. I showed every day what was happening, what the reaction was. And I also was monitoring Arab social media and sharing uh, with Washington the images that were going viral across Arab social media. And these, uh, I, thank you as well, Amy, for amplifying the voices of, of the Palestinian families at the top of the hour. Those are things that sometimes Washington does not hear. Um, but it is what the Arab public is consuming on a daily basis. And these pictures of dead children, of maimed, of maimed toddlers, they're, they're traumatizing. And my point back was, look at these images that people in this part of the world are consuming on a daily basis. There is an absolute disconnect with what people in the Arab world are seeing happening in Gaza and our talking points. The anger in the region is palpable. And it is, it is traumatic when people are consuming daily images of massacres, of people suffering, and yet they hear that the United States is willfully enabling it by continuing to send bombs, it, it, it makes people lose complete faith in the United States. And this is what was so painful to me as an American diplomat. I've worked for the last 18 years to strengthen ties between the United States and other countries to advance U.S. interests, to promote America's image. But this policy made it impossible. How can we talk about press freedom when we remain willfully silent about the killings of so many journalists? I mean, I personally worked to try to get a statement out on the killing of journalists in Gaza, and it, I was met with so much pushback. 
And I was so shocked at my own colleagues that would push back on that. It is a fundamental American value to be promoting freedom of press. We cannot have exceptions. We cannot have double standards. And so people like that are listening to other news outlets that are not in line with the Zionist narrative. This is why Al Jazeera is also being targeted. And this is uh, important. Uh, look at what's going on on the ground at colleges, campuses, over 120 different college campuses all over the nation here in the United States. And if you subdue or harm this, you know, the support for uh, Israel, you know, and, and a means for divestment, that will essentially destroy the settler colonial project. And that's what they don't want. And so like Ron Placone said earlier that yes, the information war is lost. I think a lot of us on uh, independent media, especially the left independent media are saying that this information war, the narrative war is over because, you know, once you, you know, you know, push the toothpaste out of the tube, you can't get it back in. And Israel knows this. And by extension, the Western governments know this. Now you got scholars saying this. And let, let, let's listen to this. In this country and across the world, people have created systems that reserve the right to good health for some and not others. Leaders at this university have decided that divestment and solidarity with Ukraine is more moral and more urgent than divestment and solidarity with the Palestinian people of Gaza. We are witnessing the most well-documented genocide in human history on our cell phones. Every issue you came to SPH to dedicate your career towards maternal health, infectious disease prevention, non-communicable illness, mental health, food security, healthcare systems, humanitarian aid is at a point of crisis in Gaza. Who you are, what you look like, where you live, and how much money you have determines whether your right to a healthful life is respected or ignored. Public health is political. And that is from a uh, post from Jewish Voices for Peace. Uh, they shared that. That was from Jody Ann Burry. Uh, she was commencement speaker. And so I think that's so important that, you know, you have a lot of people speaking out, which is really also part of showing that the narrative war is over. Um, here's another post, gentlemen, is the CEO of HEMS. Now, Anybody who is a man <laughs> uh, knows of this company, Hems. They actually do um, they do medication for erectile dysfunction and things like that. Well, he also came out in support of Gaza. He said, "Moral courage is greater than college degree." He says, "If you're currently protesting against the genocide of the Palestinian people and for your university's divestment from Israel, keep going. It's working." There are plenty of companies and CEOs eager to hire you regardless of university discipline. Apply here. So this is the CEO, Andrew Dunham, who's saying basically, look, if you guys are fighting against genocide and you guys get penalized by your university, not to worry, you have a job with us. If you're gonna stand on the right side of history, 
even if you get penalized for it, we're going to stand behind you. So now you have a CEO coming out in front and saying, we got you. You have a, you have a career with us. Interesting. This is why they are afraid, right? Um, this is why they do not want companies like Al Jazeera to be reporting on the news what's going on in Israel. Uh, there's another thing that I wanted to share. Yes. And this is from Asal Rod. And this also puts things into perspective as well. Asal Rod says, the fact that Israel banned Al Jazeera hours before beginning its assault on Rafa is not a coincidence. After everything we've seen in the last seven months, imagine what they'll do when they think no one is watching. And that's the reason for the, the necessity for having a free press, because you always need somebody that is watching. The problem is, is that they do not want people to report on what's actually going on in the ground. This is why Assal Rod said what she said. And yes, they did it right before they did their attack on Rafa. And as of right now, they are, there's a massacre happening in Rafa that started Sunday, I think it was Sunday, Sunday night, early Sunday morning. And so more innocent Palestinians are going to die. If not, many more have died already. More children. I have seen videos, children and, and people, you know, doing uh, chest compressions on little one and two year old bodies. It's something that you shouldn't ever have to see. But it's happening again. And who's sharing that? A lot of it's independent media. We're grabbing from these accounts on Twitter and Instagram and if they allow from TikTok. And we're like, hey, look, this is what's going on. This is what the corporate media is not showing you. And a lot of times the corporate media is also in the same pocket as the Israel uh, lobby or you know the Zionist powers. And as I showed you guys earlier, Another thing that they do not want you to know, they, they do not want you to see, is that there are a ton of Jewish people who stand with Gaza, who are saying, not in our names, not anymore. This, we, we are not doing this. And you have Jewish people that literally stand with them. So this is not a Judaism thing. This is a Zionism thing. Religion has nothing to do with this. It is all about a political ideology of settler colonialism. And many of our Jewish siblings are not standing for it. So, uh, you know, what's going on uh, with Al Jazeera, you know, I hope that they can reverse this so that they can, you know, uh, do more on the ground uh, reporting to share. I have literally videos right in front of me that I'm looking at of babies in diapers that are being treated because of the bombings that they're doing, that they've been enduring in Rafa. Um, and they are about to lead a ground invasion in Rafa. Uh, unfortunately, I can't share these images on YouTube because of, of policy guidelines. But this is from the Associated Press. It says breaking Israel's army tells Palestinians to temporarily evacuate from parts of Rafah in southern Gaza, signaling the ground invasion is imminent. So right now, like there's safe zones that are no longer safe. And it's like, what are the people, uh, what are they supposed to do, right? And you can't share this because, you know, you 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 don't know exactly what's going on in the ground because you have corporate media that is 
giving a different narrative, you know, whereas you have other media that may be more adversarial, like Al Jazeera, that would probably be more critical of what's going on on the ground. And they don't want to. Now, it says Hamas accepts Gaza ceasefire. Israel says it will continue talks, but presses on with Rafa attacks. It's like, if you actually want to do a ceasefire, if that's your goal, and want wanting to actually, you know, have a more peaceful re resolution, then why are you continuing to attack? Why, why are you continuing with attacking if Hamas is saying, okay, yeah, we will do a ceasefire. It says Hamas said Monday it accepted an Egyptian Qatari ceasefire proposal, but Israel said the deal did not meet its core demands and it was pushing ahead with an assault on the Gaza city of Rafah. Still, Israel said it would continue negotiations. Wait, how can you continue negotiations if you're still attacking? See, this is the problem. You know, because if Israel goes, oh, well, that's not good enough, then it's like, okay, well, that's acceptable. But if the Palestinians say it's not acceptable, then Palestinian resistance gets attacked for not accepting. See, 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 the, see the hypocrisy there? It's ridiculous. It's crazy. And so this is why it's important for us to have, uh, you know, these outlets that are reporting and adversarial towards these governments. Let me share this uh, also here. Right Brain TV says, if Rafa is invaded, it's the end of civilization and here's why. Our government will know that they can publicly exterminate 1 million plus people and no one will stop it. What message does that send to the empire? Quote, we don't gotta hide what we used to do in the shadows anymore, end quote. Then it's over. And this is something that I think is really necessary for everybody to keep in mind is that the empire knows that if they're able to do this to Palestinians in Gaza, what can they do to us here? Remember, outlets like RT, RT America is not in here anymore. It's not operating in the United States anymore. This is why it's important for us to keep our eyes peeled and pay attention to what they're doing. Netanyahu really is just a monster. And Netanyahu really is just indicative of who, uh, Netanyahu is really just a product of the United States. And everything he does really is what America is at its core. And unfortunately, you know, there has to be a true organizing and rising up, not just protests, but there has to be an organizing to take the power away from maniacs like Netanyahu, maniacs like Biden, maniacs like Trump, so that we can actually have true liberation and peace. Because ultimately, they're going to destroy us all. You know, we're being destroyed slowly day by day, but they're just escalating things. Look at what they're trying to do in Ukraine with the war on Russia. Look what they're trying to do, you know, to basically get rid of Palestinians in Gaza, not just in Gaza, but also the West Bank. And then look what they're trying to toy with a war with China by, you know, via proxy war in Taiwan. It's, this is why it is important for those of us who are in news outlets, especially independent media, do not stop, keep supporting, you know, it, it, even if it's not me, you know, I have I have a tiny little channel, right? But what about other, you know, larger channels? So you have the gray zone, 
uh, for instance, you have RBN, you have Savvy Sabs, you have Richard Methurst, you have uh, the Left Lens with Danny Haifong, um, you have Breakthrough News, you have many different outlets that are also talking about this. Uh, you have Abby Martin, um, you know, Dan Cohen, so many different people that are speaking out. So keep up supporting independent media, even if you can't afford to do it financially, if you can just share their links, share their websites, their articles. Uh, you have Caitlin Johnstone that's doing great work. Um, you have Margaret Kimberly, Black Agenda Report, they're doing great work. Please make sure to support independent media however you can, because there is a war on free speech. And there's a war on anti-imperialist, anti-war speech. Continuously watch this space. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses and have a beautiful day.